Retrieval Augmented Generation, RAG, lets you take documents and augment your foundation model with them. So all of your prompts coming in, they're going to scan some database of documents that you provide and augment it with, with that information. One of the most common things that you will use RAG for is question and answering over those, those documents. We're going to see how to do this, both with text files and also with PDF files. So let's take a look at the code that we have for this part. Just like everything else in this course, I do provide you with this code here that basically looks in your keys if you're using Colab, which is what I recommend for this course, and gets your OpenAI API key. Don't hard code those into here. That's bad for security. You upload it and somebody's going to exploit your, your account. Then we go and install everything that we need, PyPDF and, and other things, just so that we can make use of PDF files as well. So that installs all of that. And now we're gonna do question and answering over RAG documents. Over, so this will be documents that have been loaded into an embeddings database. Chroma DB is the one that we're working with in this course. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to give you some sample data for RAG to be particularly effective, this must be either data that is more current than what was in the foundation model already, what the foundation model already knew about, or data that is proprietary, like maybe company information. So an example here is I use GenAI to create a bunch of sample data, so a bunch of biographies for people that don't exist. Elena Martinez is a seasoned robotics engineer at Future Tech. I made that company name up. There might be a Future Tech. A leading innovator in artificial intelligence and robotics based in Silicon Valley. With a master's degree in mechanical engineering from MIT. And over a decade of experience, Elena has been pivotal in the development of autonomous robot systems, blah, 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 blah. So this we have a bunch of files of just a mess of these biographies. And we're going to be able to ask the large language model about these people, even though they're not in the foundation model, because they don't exist. And most people are not in the foundation model. I find that I am in the foundation model, so they, they usually know about me, but mainly I think because I'm a, I'm a YouTube YouTuber, influencer, and not even a, a really major one. So it, there does seem to be, be some bias towards influencers, certainly there. Okay, these are the files that I generated. These are all on my data site, and you can go in and access them. They are just, and there you can see, it's just a file full of biographies for, for people that, and it doesn't look like there's a whole, some of these look pretty similar, so, but it's, it's generated data. So we're going to use GPT-40 Mini, and we're going to basically have all of these URLs. These are all the different files. We're going to concat them together. They're text files, so that makes it a bit easier. But at the end, we'll see how to do PDF files, because assignment six that is due in conjunction with this module, you'll need to do PDF files. These are very important, so the chunking sizes, so it's 900 tokens is the chunk size, and then 300 is how, how far we move on each one. So each chunk, each 900 range, would we'll move it by 300, then 300, and, and, and so on. Then we're going to loop over all of these URLs, and we're going to build up the documents. The documents are these chunks. So we, we print out that we're reading it. We load it from the URL, we get the content, and then we create the chunk, passing in those two critical values. Those are configuration parameters that you specify if you're using generic sort of chunking strategies. You can use your own chunking strategies that can get very complex, and this is some of how you really cause RAG to be effective. It does require an embeddings model, and we're just letting it default to this, which will work well for Chroma and ChromaDB. 
so now we establish our embedding function and the, the splitter that's going to do the actual chunking and we, we obtain the document, the chunks from the document. We load them into Chroma DB. You see we're creating Chroma DB from that embedding function. Now we're going to set up a chain to allow us to actually query it. So we're going to now basically load a rag prompt. This is a standard rag prompt that Hugging Face gives us. So here is what a rag prompt looks like. This is actually quite important. So this is the default one that you're using. You can create your own, certainly. You're an assistant for a question answering task. Use the following pieces of relevant information to answer the question. If you don't know the answer, say you don't know. That's always important to say because it'll, it'll tend to make things up. Use three sentences maximum and keep the answer concise. So you may want to use your own if you don't want three sentences or you want something, something else like that. So the, you can see here the question that it's attempting to answer and then the context. The context is what comes back from the embeddings database. This is the RAG component of it that it's augmenting it with. So you can see this is basically how, how this works. Everything gets built into, into the prompt. And then we build a chain. So we give it the context uh, is, is the retriever. So that's, that's the querying of the Chroma DB. And the question, we're going to then give it the rag prompt that, it's gonna, that this is going to all feed into, goes into the large language model, and then it gets the, the string output. You can now invoke it and it will, it will run that. Actually, it does know the answer to that. I was trying something here, here earlier, but it basically gives you the description of her. Um, if you do scan for her directly, it, it basically tells you she is an avid rock climber and all that stuff that was in her biography. This is going directly from the database. So this is the text actually there. Earlier would be where we ask it to... Uh, to answer the question. And I will correct that, but believe me, it does, it does give a, a legitimate answer for her. I was adjusting to a few, to a few changes in LangChain. And here you can see it basically prints out that, that prompt that I, that I showed you before. This was provided by, by LangChain. And here you can see where we're actually grabbing data from the, from the RAG sources. You can see too that it doesn't it doesn't always clip it nicely there because it's it's doing that 300 token kind of a, kind of a split there. Let's see how to do it over PDF documents. So I generated a book, a steampunk book, kind of like 20,000 Leagues Beneath the Sea maybe. And if you open it, I have a link to it here, but if you just open that, it is a PDF file. And this was generated by the book generator that we saw earlier in the course. And it, it's, it's just a whole, it's just a whole uh, novel. And we're able to load it in as a PDF document and then ask questions about it. This code will be very useful to you for assignment six. So certainly be aware of that. And then the, the star of the, of the book, and by the way, all this code is really pretty much the same except that we're doing this. We're using the PDF reader and we're extracting the text from the PDF. That's, that's really the only, only difference. And then it, it loads the whole thing. We have the chain that we can make use of. And then I can ask it, who is Eliza Hawthorne? This is nobody from, from the real world. This is the, the, the main character from this book that it generated for me. And it explains she's a determined inventor and a central character in a narrative involving adventure and innovation in a steampunk setting. She seeks to challenge the status quo and uncover the truth behind the forces manipulating technology in London. Eliza embodies the spirit of change and empowerment, ready to forego, forge her own path amidst chaos. Sounds riveting. So that is how you can perform question and answer over this. You'll get a chance to go a little deeper on question and answer when you do assignment six for yourself. 
Thank you for watching this video. If this is useful, please uh, give me a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything out that I have on this course or other videos on artificial intelligence.